Hello, everyone, and <laughs> welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Jamil, uh, and today I am going to be solving a lit code with you. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different format today. If you noticed, we are already on our screen. Um, so this is actually the second time I'm filming this video today. And I thought it was be because this would might be a better approach uh, to the videos from here on out. At least that way I have a sense of direction of which way I'm going with um, uh, the problem that we have solved. I know as these problems get more, more complex, I am going to be spending more time trying to problem solve the actual thought process, but I believe it, there is a lot more benefit in me like having a linear uh, stream of thought and explaining um, a solution that I might be already familiar with while maybe like getting stuck on, um, you know, certain bugs in my code, problem solving those, and then showing people how I could, how I came up, how I recreated the solution that I came up with earlier. So without further ado, let's take a look at the question. Uh, today we are taking a look at the maximum nesting, nesting depth of the parentheses. So um, a string is a valid uh, parentheses string denoted VPS if it meets one of the following. It is an empty string or a single character not equal to a left parentheses or a right parentheses. And it can be written as A, B, A concatenated with B, or A and B uh, are VPSs. Or it can be a, uh, written as A, where A is a VPS. And uh, we can similarly define the nesting depth, depth S, of any VPS as follows. So at the depth of an empty string is zero, and the depth of C is zero, right? Where C is a string is, that is a single character not equal to the left bracket or right bracket. Um, and then depth of A plus B is the max depth between A and B, where A and B are both VPSs. And then the depth of the left parentheses plus A plus the right parentheses is equal to one plus the depth of A, which where A is a VPS, right? So this is, each one of these are valid parentheses strings. So they start and end with strings, right? And so for example, an empty string, two brackets, two uh, pairs of closed parentheses, and then this whole string of parentheses, they have depths of zero, one, and two. And let me explain how they came to that, okay? Uh, obviously, an empty string we mentioned earlier has a nesting depth of zero. This second example here, the only, va the only parentheses that matter are the enclosing parentheses, these two right here on the outside. That's what dictates that this is a VPS, right? Um, because those two outer parentheses contain these two inner parentheses, and that's a depth of one, right? And then these parentheses in here, right? You have your outer parentheses, which is your first level, and then your inner parentheses, which is your second level. And that's how, huh, you get, hmm. Yeah, your outer parentheses, I guess, are these two, and then your inner parentheses is this one, and that's, and that's how uh, the deepest level, the maximum depth, because you have two diff, oh, okay, I see, I see. You have, you have a depth here of one, right? And a depth here of one, a depth here of one. I see. And then you have a depth of two in these VPS. Right, I see. Okay. And that's how we came to zero, one, and two. Actually, my like the solution that we will come up with will probably uh, um, take handle that in a uh, proper manner. So if we go with their example, which makes a little bit more sense, again, the only characters that we care about in the string are um, parentheses. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have these two sets of parentheses that encapsulate everything, right? Because we have one times plus two times three plus eight divided by four uh, plus one, right? Uh, 
This plus one, we don't really care about. That sits outside of our parentheses, so that's not part of our VPS. And then we'll take care of uh, we'll, this set of parentheses is different than this set of parentheses, and both of those sets of parentheses are VPSs. So what that means is, you, if you were to uh, consider these two outer sets of parentheses as, as depth one, this would be depth two. This would also be depth two. And then this, this third set of parentheses would actually be depth three. And that's how we get to the output of three. So digit eight is inside of three nested parentheses in the string, right? Okay, so let's start tackling the issue. Uh, so uh, our we should also take a look at our constraints. So we ha our code has to be able to handle a string of up to 100 length. And your we will see that our string can contain alphanumeric values, operands, and parentheses. And it is guaranteed that you will at least have a VPS. Okay? So the approach that I am going to take here today will require um, basically... A comparison. We're going to be running comparisons. And allow me to take you through that. All right. Uh, we know that we are going to be past a string, right? Past a string with alpha numeric mm, uh, characters and operands, right? And we need to return the maximum depth that is within the string passed through the function, right? So we're going to be returning a number. So we have to run a comparison between two things. We want to see what our current depth is and if that depth is going to be larger than or like yeah, our previous depth. So if you know if eight is at depth three, we want to see that. I mean, I guess larger than, deeper than, uh, is deeper than any other uh, value in the string. So we'll start off by saying let depth a number equal to zero, and then let max, which is going to be our, our comparison, equal to zero. And now we're going to need to iterate over our string because we are going to go. I we're going to run a compare. Uh, we're going to go over it once, okay? Which is just how you work with strings, work with arrays. They are just iterators. And i is going to be less than s dot length, and then i plus 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 plus, right? If the value that we are currently looking at is oh, equal to a left parentheses. What do we want to do? We want to add to our depth. All right. Why do we want to add to our depth? That means we stepped into a, um, we, we stepped into a, a, a basically a deeper depth. Now we want to run a comparison here, right? Uh, math.max is going to be the comparison between depth and max. Okay? Else if I'm going to copy this constraint here and I'm going to paste that in there, but I'm going to change this left parentheses to a right parentheses. Okay? I'm going to say depth is minus equal one and math.max, depth, and max. Okay. Uh, if I'm doing minus equal one, then I don't need to run a comparison. Okay. And I'm going to return the maximum value, which is the number that we are looking for. So let's take a look and see what's happening, right? We have two variables that we have started, uh, that we have assigned and we have assigned them to the value of zero. We go over our string. Like as we mentioned before, the only important variable or uh, string characters to us are the parentheses. We want to know because when we, when we open up a set of parentheses, we step one depth deeper. 
And when we close the parentheses, we step out of one depth. So for example, here, right? Left parentheses, we've stepped into depth one. Left parentheses, we've stepped into depth two. Right parentheses, we've stepped out of depth two and back into depth one. Left parentheses, we've stepped back into depth two. And then left parentheses again, we've stepped back into left depth three, right? And each time this happens, we are running a comparison to see if, you know, our depth is the maximum depth that we have achieved. So for the sake of simplicity or like uh, visualization, it will make it a little bit easier for people to see what I'm, what I'm talking about when I console log the depth or like uh, the index that we are at, the current depth and the current maximum. Oh, look at that. We got an answer that's incorrect. Oh, because I didn't assign this. Max is equal to, oops. Okay, so we are stepping into the first character of the string, which happens to be a left bracket, right? Now depth is one and max is one. Hmm. Yeah, because we're doing a reassignment already. If I take this here, and just paste this here before we reassign max it will make a little bit a little bit more sense right so when we first step into our string we're met with a left bracket depth is one and max is zero right we want now max to be reassigned to max or to, to the larger of the two numbers which happens to be one. So that's why when we hit num when we hit a left bracket again, right? We run the comparison between depth and max one more time, which is two and one. And max is then reassigned to the greater of the two values, right? Um, Anyways, as this goes through, it's just going to continue to reassign max and the maximum number the maximum number is the highest number of depths that we have stepped into. Taking out this console log and submitting this solution will show us that we have a uh, working problem, a working solution. So I hope you learned something here today. I thought um, there are ways for us to improve on the solution and we can explore going through them as well. But I think the solution is fairly um, efficient because we only have to go over the, uh, the, the string once and we are only running a comparison when we add to the depth, right? And so it doesn't have to do this operation each and every time. Sometimes it can just, it will just skip over the loop, skipping completely over the index. Sometimes it will just, you know, subtract. And then sometimes it will add and it will, um, it will do a reassignment, which is two different um, things for the, for the, for JavaScript to compute. It's two different computations. That's the word that I'm looking for. But yeah, I hope you learned something here today. Uh, this is another day of me solving a lead code problem for you. Um, if you like the video, if you like this new format, uh, please like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment for me uh, in the bottom uh, of this video. I would highly appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you learned something. Uh, let me know if you like this new um, this new out uh, this, this this new layout. I think this is a little bit better. I think as I get a little bit uh, more comfortable with speech and talking to a camera, this will flow a little bit smoother. Uh, but I liked that at least I could present a working solution to you um, streamlined so that you um, have an idea of uh, what's happening and you don't get confused alongside me. And I can take the time off camera to do a little bit of like uh, brainstorming and figuring out what the actual issue with my code is. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.